Good morning, all of you who are out there listening to us on this beautiful day. It's a day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Welcome to the Galilee Baptist Church of Trenton, New Jersey. I'm so glad to be in the Lord's house one more time. Tony, take us there. Both dead and buried, 
and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He said this before, speak of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Neither has flesh, his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus had God raised up, wherefore we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted, and have received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he had shared forth this, which ye now see in him. May the Lord add a blessing to his words and sanctify them to our hearts. Amen. Good morning. May we bow for prayer today. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands, from the east, and from the west, from the north, and from the south. Father God, we just come thanking you for this day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Father, yes, we are well aware of what's going on in this barren land. But Father, more than that, we know that you are the true and living God, a mighty God that we serve. We thank you for your continued presence in throughout all that we are dealing with today. We thank you, Lord God, for going through the homes, going through the nursing homes, and Father God, just as the scripture said, is gathering us from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south, Father. Continue to watch over us, Father God. Continue to give us more proof of who you are. Lord God, we just thank you for the great work that you're doing. And Lord God, we just ask right now that you continue to reign in and around in our lives, Father. And Father God, we know that one day we shall, this too shall pass, and we may go to higher heights, Father God. But Lord God, we ask right now that we continue to reach out to you, we continue to serve you, and we continue to trust in you. For you are our only hope. You are our great assurance. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for his shed blood. And now we thank you for your Holy Spirit that continues to reign in us and upon us. In Jesus' name, we ask and we do pray. Amen. Once again, pardon me, good morning to all of you. It is a joy to be in the Lord's house one more time. I have some information I need to share with you, and I don't do it with great joy, but with an emergency concept. Your president of these United States is now talking about opening up America again. That's a very dangerous thing to do just now. People are still dying. People are still becoming contaminated. Some people say that they need to open the churches back up, but I suggest to you, we still need to keep our distance one to another until this pandemic is over. Some people will tell you it's all right for us to start opening up on May 1st or May 15th. The governors, most of them, are saying that it's not the right thing to do. Some of the doctors are saying it's too soon. But your president is saying that it's okay. But you need to remember that's the same president that wouldn't tell you that we were having a problem coming in January and or February. Be careful. Don't be fooled again. They said they were going to give you money and 
the money will run out before everybody got theirs. Somehow or another, the truth doesn't seem to be coming in our direction. They said that young people couldn't catch it and blacks wasn't catching it, only to find out that more blacks than whites in ratio was catching it. They, and then we found out they were hit and get hit, that they were dying in nursing homes, and it was stacking the bodies, and nobody was saying anything. Truth seemed to have lost its way. And that seems to be a determination to wipe out a certain group of people and to enrich another group of people. And I know that what I'm saying is no anger some people, but I'd rather tell the truth and please God than accept the lie and fool you. Pay attention. Don't be nobody's fool. This is no time to play. But I will tell you, and this too shall pass. Those are our announcements. Thus far, I've been requested by many to say, Reverend, we want to support the Ministry of Galilee. Well, here's how you do it. You, if you want to give, you give through giveify.com. Galilee is set up with that. Then you can either bring it to the church and give it to a deacon or a trustee, or you can mail it in to the church at 440 MLK Boulevard, Trenton, New Jersey. Anyone who wants to support us, you're more than welcome. We look forward to brighter days ahead, but right now, this we must deal with in a very cautious way. God bless you. God keep you. Is our prayer. Tony.
should ever write my life story. was so smart mouth 
that he was able to persuade a third of the angels of glory into believing that Lucifer could take God. Just like some of you, Lucifer has convinced you that there is no God. Lucifer convinced the angels that he could take heaven from God. But the story goes is that he tries and loses the battle. Gets dethroned and put out of heaven because he was so upset over God not listening to him. But then again, don't be too rough on him. Uh, Lucifer was able to convince Eve that God was alive. In the garden, Lucifer convinced Eve that it was all right to eat of the fruit of the tree in the midst of God. Said unto her, he just don't want you to be as smart as him. He don't want you to be a God. And Miss Eve, being who she was, tried the fruit. But nothing happened. And that's what persuades some people when you pray and nothing happened. How do you know nothing happened? Because God does not work always instantaneously. Sometimes he listens and hears our prayer and projects the answer down the road of peace. There she ate the fruit and quickly ran to share the information with her husband her dude, her fellow, her man, that she ate the fruit and it's all right. Nothing happened. And then she convinced him to eat. And I, I got an issue with Adam. Because Adam had been told directly by God, don't eat of the tree in the midst of the garden. No, never mind what didn't happen to eat, I told you. Don't eat that fruit. But then, Adam being the weak need man that he was, he got a bunch of cousins on the face of this earth right now, that he listened to the woman and ate of the fruit. And that took over his authority. And mankind has been dying ever since. Do you think that this pandemic is the only dying occasion that has ever occurred? No. People have been dying in droves for a long, long, long time. Ever so many years, there seems to be a new disease on the horizon. There seems to be a multitude of people who are dying, but you never notice how many people go to sleep at night. They don't write about that and never wake up for the next day. It's not one, it's not two, it's not hundreds, it's in a thousand around the world. But they don't write about that. Yeah, yeah. You never pay attention uh, until a plane falls and so many hundreds fall in that plane and die. But then on one occasion, the plane trailed and everybody was killed but one baby. God picks who lives and who dies. Right so I need you to understand that dying is not the worst thing. But what if? There is no God. If there is no God, then who is Jesus the Son of? And if he's the Son of God, why hadn't he spoken up? I've got an answer for you. He did. He spoke up in the New Testament over and over and over again. And God seems to be like my grandmother. My grandmother never told me anything but once. She expected me to remember after that. And the couple of times that I didn't remember, she pulled out her persuasive stick and convinced me that her word was wrong. Some of y'all laughing because you, you knew my grandmother. You, your grandmother and my grandmother are both grandmothers. <laughs> my brother just said his father was raised by her. But then when God says don't do and Satan says do, whom should we listen to? Why is it that it's so much more fun to do wrong than it is to do good? Why is it that we in our human nature desire love to be disobedient? 
Even to the point that our children try to be disobedient. And what I'm about to say, probably don't get me locked up, but I think I'm too old for them to come get me now. But all of my children said, no, daddy don't play. If you tell you don't, he means just what he said. And they said, well, if you'd have been raising us dad in this day and time, they'd have locked you up. I said, yeah, but I gave each one of y'all two quarters. And they said, yeah, dad, what was that on my When the first quarter is when I whipped you, you would call the popo to come get me. Well, what was the second point of us when I get out of jail? I said, do y'all understand? And they clearly said, we understand. You've not playing. Because <clears throat> the same folks that have locked me up are not going to put food on your table, clothes on your back, neither will they pay your bond to get you out of trouble. You are my responsibility. And don't you think God loves us the same way? That if we get in trouble, he paid the bond. He allowed Christ to come and die for us. And just a few days ago, we celebrated the crucifixion of Christ and the resurrection. And yet there are people now still doubting whether there is a God. But what if there is no God? Then who makes the grass grow? And if there is no God, who keeps the planets from running, running one into the other? If there is no God, who is it that keeps the heartbeat in a gnat? Or keeps the wings flapping on a fly? If there is no God. Because somebody has to be in charge. And we already know Satan can't be in charge. He reminds me of somebody else on the face of this earth who likes to always tell a lie and make you think it's the truth. There are some people who have the incapability of telling the truth. And it's because they've spent their life living a lie. And now you've got some preachers in pulpit who like to entertain the people and make them feel good. Like, well, if there is a heaven, you can want anyhow because he's too just a God. No, 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 don't get that messed up. If you don't believe in God, nor in Christ Jesus, you are not welcome in heaven. There are those who want to preach to you and give you the howdy howdy and make you think that everything is hunky dory and it's all wonderful. But I'm here to tell you the truth. There is a heaven. And if there is a heaven, there is a hell. And one third of the angels of heaven wind up going out of heaven before they chose to follow Lucifer rather than listen to God. The mess we're in right now is because God has grown weary of keep on blessing us. Storm after storm and he lets you live anyhow. Lie after lie and he lets us live anyhow. Evil after evil and he lets us live anyway. But there is a payday coming. There is a day coming when every knee must bow and every tongue shall Confess. There were those of you who called in to let us know that our camera was sideways last Sunday. But rather than talking about whether the sermon was good or not, you wanted to tell us how about the camera being sideways. What I want to know is did the message get through to you? It doesn't matter if I'm this way. It does matter if my heart is this way. You need to know whom Christ is. You need to know who wakes you in the morning. Who turns the light out at night and, and let the moon be shining upon you? Who is it that makes the doves make that chuckling noise in the early morning to let you know that a brand new day has dawned? Who is it who wakes the sparrow from her nest and then tells her where breakfast is? Who is it? Who wakes the rabbit and tell him run because he's on the menu? Who is it that put the fish in the sea and tell him which way to go according to the season? Well, I guess I've been complaining enough. But what if? What if there is no God, but there is a hell? 
Or whatever hell is real and Satan is ruler. What has Satan ever done for you that would make you want to serve him? Why is it that you get so fascinated with death? Then when these demons come back and you got people claiming to be witches and they got power and people believing in the underworld, why is it so easy to believe in Satan but not in God? He who wakes you in the morning. He, when your heart starts skipping the beat and beating so fast, you think something's getting ready to happen. Why is it you stop then since you're so positive there is no God? Why not just go ahead and do what you're going to do and suffer the consequences? I'll tell you why, because there's something in the back of your heart that tells you there just might be a hell. Right. There might be a Satan and that you're not really ready to go to hell because once in, you're there to stay. You, you can't buy your way out. You can't lie your way out. You can't win the vote and get let out. No, no. Once in hell, you're there to stay. And one man wrote back or called back, should I say, from hell, talking to a servant of the Lord and said, let Nazareth go back and tell my brothers. I got five of them. They don't come to this place. It's in your Bible if you haven't torn that page out. It says that that can't happen because he have prophets with him that are steady telling them now that there's a heaven and there is a hell. And you all got preachers now, old and young, tall and short, dark and white, doesn't matter, but you determine, I don't believe them. But you believe a newspaper. You believe a magazine, but you won't believe a deliverer of the word of God from his Bible. And then when you wind up in hell, you're going to ask the question, why didn't I listen? And God can't, do we have to stay here? But God only saves us one time out of hell. And I'm talking about why he in there. And he opened the door and let Jesus go in to preach to the souls that were in there and to bring them out. Would you believe there were some who believed the lie and said, that's not Jesus. And stayed. But here you are. And now you're so bad and so bold, you won't even say your blessings over the food you eat that he provides. I'm talking about God now. You're so bold that you won't even kneel down to pray because you figure I'm too educated to fall for such a stark booth like that. But I want to ask you a question. If you're so smart, if you're so brilliant, if you're so educated, how come you don't know that there is a God? Why is it that you spend your time trying to defy God and you say, well, I don't believe in Satan either, but you serve him. By not believing in God, you're serving Satan. And by your own evil actions, by the way you do things, and you can throw your rock and hide your hand, and you think God's not looking? Do you think you can do evil and God not notice? If God knows when a sparrow falls from the sky, with all the sparrows in the world, if he notices one fall, you think he don't see you? And the evil that you do, and you don't even say I'm sorry, you don't ask for forgiveness, and you laugh at the preacher. Well, there are those of you now who are sitting at your table, listening and looking at me and thinking, that's just a buffoon. There are those of you who say, it's a waste of time, it's fake news. There are those of you who find fault with everything that's good and righteous and holy. But I'm here to tell you, your day is coming. Our tears shall be wiped away. And every saint that believed in God, even though we weren't perfect, even though we were not as righteous as we should have been, we trusted in God to make a way somehow. And he made that way through Jesus Christ. I bet you if I could call somebody, matter of fact, let me call him now. Lazarus, come here, boy. Lazarus comes from the grave and said, I was dead, but I'm now alive. I know what death feels like. I died and I was buried for three days. He said, but my friend, and I'm glad somebody called Jesus friend, said, but my friend. He wasn't even in town, but he showed up three days later 
and he called me by name. And if y'all want to know why he called me by name, because if he had just said, get up, everybody would have got up. So, but he called me by name, because the only one it was me to get up, to be a witness to the rest of the world that there is life after death. What if? I guess I ought to back off of that. But what if God is dead? Then who gonna keep his promise? What if God is dead? Then who gonna give Christ the power to do what he's been charged to do by God? What if God is dead? Then our grandparents died with a false hope. What if God is dead? Then the only person who loved us without question must be dead with no way of getting up. Who could get God up if he was dead? Not Jesus, not the Holy Spirit. Because God's not in the business of dying. God is in the business of making dead live again. And so therefore, I got to go now. I, I, I've tried to patience too long. But if there is no God, then there is no hope. If there is no God, there is no heaven. If there is no God, there's no life after death. If there is no God, then there's no hell going on either. But what if there is a God? And what if his name is Jehovah Jireh? What if his name is Elohim? What if there is a deliverer and a way maker, a burden bearer, a friend when you're friendly? The doctors can't figure out this Corona 19 sickness, but God I serve, he's able to not just know what it is, but know how to fix it when the time comes. He is going to deliver us. He is going to make a way for us. They have a song that says, the Lord will make a way somehow. And that makes me want to fight on and run on to see what the end's going to be. And so every Christian don't sit there and wallow in self-pity. You ought to get up and give God some praise. Every morning when the sun shines, you ought to praise his holy name. But wait, no, no. You ought to also praise him when the clouds are coming over. Praise him when the rain comes down. Praise him when tears fall from your eyes. Because he's the same God that'll wipe away your every tear. I know don't look good now, but just hold on to see what the end gonna be. I know it doesn't look good now, but it didn't look good on Calvary's hill. They killed my Jesus and then buried him in a bottom grave. And when I was studying, I wondered why they called it a bottom grave. But the reason it was borrowed, because he didn't need it for three days. And he gave it back to the rightful owner of it. I don't know how you feel about it, but I know there's a God. He talks with me. He walks with me. And when I stumble, he picks me back up again. When I fall, he wipes away my burden down me. Sit high and look low. My Savior is a way maker and a burden bearer. Ain't he all right? I wish I had witnesses right now. I wish somebody said, raise your hand and said, the Lord will make a way somehow. But that's what you think, <laughs> because you don't know what he's done for me. You don't know where he brought me from. You don't know what he opened doors for me. Ain't it hard? Ain't it hard? Yeah, yeah. I said I wasn't gonna put up today, but you don't know what I feel right now. He walks with me. And he talks with me, and he tells me I am alone. His life is on the sparrow, and I, 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 I know he watches over me. Yeah, but if there is a God, 
Yes, it is. 